Hey, I'm Zella Sage Plays. Welcome to the latest development at San Bernardino Zoo. Yes, that's right, Africa is finally under construction. Let's move our drones into position and see where we're going to be building today. It's been a long time since we've had an area as big as this to build in and we're going to need it because Africa is going to be absolutely huge. The first stage of the plan is to do this and fill it with the minimum sizes that we're going to need for all the habitats, shops and monorail station that we're going to have in this area. There's going to be all sorts of terrain work to do because I want this to be visible all the way back into the water terraces. You can see here one of those boxes up in the air so that the Africa area acts as a centerpiece to the zoo and draws people into it. I'll tell you about what's going to be in all of the different areas in a minute but let's get straight into the building. So we're going to start with the little transport terrain trick that I showed you last week so we can start to get the paths in. And while we do that, I'll tell you about how Africa is going to work. So the entrance to the Africa section is going to be a big forest. The guests are going to walk into the forest onto a path that winds up and to the right and essentially just keeps climbing. And hidden in the walls on either side of the path will be exhibits for some of the giant insects and amphibians that live in Africa. The guests will be completely surrounded by forest and rocks and mud walls. And eventually they'll get to a habitat for red river hogs and then a carpi and bongo before climbing all the way up to Gorilla Mountain. After Gorilla Mountain, the guests will descend down to the river where the zoo's hippos are gonna live. There'll also be a riverside restaurant. And then after the river, the path will wind down to the savannah area and then an area for the big cats of Africa and finally it will climax with the coast for African penguins. So as you can see there's a lot of work to get done and that's the first part of it complete. So we can delete all of these um, transport things, we don't need those. We've got the basics of where the path is going to go. We're just going to move this box into position. This is where the exhibits are going to be. And then once we've set that back from the path, we can start actually working on turning this terrain into the path for the guests. So we're going to use the terrain brush to start widening all these areas so we can get some guest paths up onto it. This took a very long time. You know what the paths are like in this game. In fact, I think we'll do a Franchise Masters. So if you're struggling to get paths down where you want them to be, especially on raised terrain like this, Try toggling the flatten terrain option on and you may be able to place the path at the expense of losing a little bit of the gradient. Okay, let's move on to the entrance. So I've created a sign here using one of Wyatt Andrews amazing fonts that we've used a few times in the zoo. Uh, we've got it in some nice African colors. And what we're going to do is clone it, move it slightly behind itself and then up and to the left. And then we're going to recolor it a nice dark green and start making a border. Sometimes I like to make it black and just have one of them like a drop shadow. But this time we're going to completely surround the text. I think I got this trick from my good friend JP. But if you just surround the letters with different colored letters and you get it in the right place, then you get a really nice border on the font. And that is looking really nice now. What I want to do with this is actually have it on a banner which is something I've never done before anywhere, I think. Certainly not in this zoo. There's no sort of in-game banners, so it's not something you see very often. So I want to try and make one out of the European marquee pieces. And this banner is going to be suspended between two trees at the entrance so the guests walk underneath it. It's going to need a lot of detailing, but I think it's going to look really cool when it's finished. These banner pieces are great. We use them in the desert house, and there's one in particular, this one here, that's got a really nice curved effect on it. And I think this is going to make a really nice banner. Decided to change it, make it a bit longer uh, and get a bit more of an interesting shape because it's going to be suspended between these two big palms. So we're going to suspend this using one of the new uh, rope pieces that we've got, which is flexi color. So that's great. We can make this look more like a sort of wire. Uh, we're going to have this strung between the two trees all the way along the top of the banner. This is based on a piece of concept art I found. Um, I can't remember where I found it or what it's for, like a game or something if I recall correctly. But I just really like the idea of a, a banner rather than a sign. And though it was strung between two trees, it looked really cool. And I thought this would be a great place to use it. The path that sits under this banner is the entrance to the Africa area, obviously. And it is gonna be connected eventually to the desert house and a couple of other areas. And what I wanna have to sort of segue between the uh, desert house which is all African animals and then the Africa area itself is a habitat for the Somali wild ass. I think that'll go really nicely alongside the path and hoof stocks always great for sort of filler habitats. I think that'll set the scene before we get to uh, before we get to the African area itself. We're going to use these new rope coils from the Oceania pack to tie the banner onto the tree. One of them's a little too big, one of them's a little too small. So with um, some cloning, we can get the small one to look like it fits perfectly around the trunk here. And then we'll just do the same thing at the bottom and on the other tree and make everything look realistic. The new rope knots that you can see on the banner itself as well are great. 
really nice size. They really help to sell the idea that this is actually suspended from these trees. Now I want to get some um, artwork onto the sign as well. And we're going to use this Caracal sign. This is going to be featured in the African area. To be honest, I'd rather use one of the sort of big name animals we're going to have in here, lions, elephants, etc. But uh, because all those animals are in the base game, the signs for them, uh, they're just not really to my taste and they don't really um, line up with the, the rest of the zoo. So I needed an animal that had been added more recently so that we had one of the new style signs for it, uh, which is where the caracal comes in. Next up, we're going to start decorating this. So it's not just a, a couple of bits of rope with a banner. So we're going to have loads and loads of all the different types of vines covering this. I really want to avoid the sort of cheesy African theming of, you know, mud huts, tribal masks, all that stuff. Um, it just feels a little dated um, for what we're trying to do in San Bernardino Zoo. So we'll be getting some African theming in where we can, uh, but trying to make it a bit, uh, a bit more subtle than a lot of the base game Africa scenery. That's the first set of vines in, starting to look good, but we need lots, lots more. I want this area to be so lush and overgrown. I want it to be really, really immersive. So we're gonna go with some strangler figs um, or strangler fig roots going up uh, these palms. So the bottom of them is a bit more interesting. We'll do that to both of them. And while we finish that off, I'll just tell you how the future episodes of San Bernardino are gonna go. The way I wanna do this area is try and do maybe two or three episodes in Africa, and then we'll go and do something else for an episode. Some of the smaller builds that I wanna do throughout the zoo, there's still about, I think, eight areas to go. Um, and then we'll come back to Africa. I don't want to just spend 12 episodes in a row all in the same area. That's the plan. We do have a little bit of flexibility in terms of exactly what animals are going to go into this area, especially in the savannah. Um, so let me know in the comments which animals you are desperate to see in the Africa section and I will take those into consideration when we get to that part of it. I know a lot of you have been commenting for a long time about when the big, big animals are gonna come into the zoo, uh, lions, elephants, etc. and this is the time. So uh, let me know which ones you really wanna see. What we're gonna do now is start planting up the rest of this forest and start getting the immersive vibe that we want. So loads of different African trees planted really close together, about as close as I can get them, and, and I think they still look realistic and obviously the scavola bushes everywhere. They are so good for ground cover. Um, use these in the Amazon area and in the jungle and now in Africa, they're just such a good generic sort of ground cover. And then we'll move on to the next stage, which is the walls. So once you're in Africa, I don't want you to be able to see out of it, if that makes sense. So I want you to be constantly going down winding paths, wondering what is gonna be around the next corner. So we're gonna be using the mud walls that um, were originally made by Zoov and we've customized them many times since then to make sure that the, the sight lines are blocked everywhere and the guests can only see what we want them to see. I snuck that little wooden elephant statue in, which I really like. And now we're gonna make a fountain with some of the African pieces and some of the classic pieces and some special effects, obviously. Just makes the entrance a little bit more grand. And then we're really gonna to go to town on these entrance trees because they're such a focal point. Um, I'm using the tomato plant and just hiding it inside the trunk. And it just gives this nice little sort of green growth on the um, bark. We've got some more vines growing up it as well. Just helps to make it look a bit more unique. And now it's time to add the first animals into Africa. One of the things I want to concentrate on in this area is guest flow and guest experience. So you want the experience to build as you go through the area. I don't want the guests to just walk through the entrance and straight away you know, there's an elephant and then there's, you know, 10 lions and that's the area. You want to build things up. So firstly, they're going to go into the forest um, and that will set the vibe of all the trees and the planting. And then we're going to get to some exhibits where you can start to see some of the wildlife that lives in Africa. So we've got three of them here. These are going to be hidden in a wall. So they're not going to be like a standalone exhibit. They're going to be in the walls that the guests walk past to get into the rest of the area. So we're going to have one for the Goliath beetle, one for the Goliath frog, and one for the giant African snail. Now, because of the big forest that surrounds this, there's almost no direct sunlight on these exhibits, which is great to reduce glare. Um, but obviously it makes it a little bit dark inside, even with the in-game lights. So we're gonna add some of our own lights in here. I've hidden an aquatic light on top of each of the exhibits, and that really lights the insides up, as you can see, which is gonna be very useful once we've completely surrounded this with rocks and vines and foliage, which is what we're gonna do now. So what we're gonna do is heavily modify these mud walls once more to use them as a border for each of the exhibits. 
as is normally the case when we use the exhibits in this zoo, what we want to do is make them look smaller than they are. So like we did with Amazonian giants, what we're going to do is cover it up with these, get really natural looking rock work that goes just around the center of the um, exhibit, as you can see here, to provide a little viewing window for the guests. We'll randomize it so that each viewing window is a unique shape. And once we've got the rest of the wall in, we're just going to have these little sort of tanks inside the walls where the guests can see the animals. So we'll do it quite roughly at first. We've also got a sort of tree trunk effect, which I've done using the little um, sleeping logs we made for the desert house, just loads of those copied. And we'll keep playing around with it until we get a shape that we like. Lots of rocks at the bottom and then a bit more bark at the top. And then what we need to do is make sure that none of these stalagmite pieces that we're using for rocks are gonna cover up the parts of the exhibit where the animals are actually gonna be. So it takes a bit of time, as it always does with exhibits, of watching where the animals appear and making sure that they're not gonna be um, covered up by a rock or anything like that. And then we'll get a load more vines in and start putting some more foliage in as well and just make this look really vibrant. This is gonna be kind of the opposite of Amazonian giants. That was a very um, architectural kind of exhibit display. This is gonna be the opposite. Just looks like it's kind of growing out of the wall. That's the effect that I want and because we get the smaller space in there the animals that you can see become more of a feature and they're not just lost we will be getting some much much bigger animals very soon so make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already so you can see those episodes when they come out we've got a bit more planting to do here quite a lot more more vines of all different types there's going to be so many vines in this area it's going to be vine central there's a snail looking good, really nice position in the center of the exhibit there. And I'm gonna do something a little bit sneaky here. I don't really wanna use the exhibit boxes for this. I want something much more subtle. So we're gonna hide an exhibit box in the rocks so they still work for the guests. And then we're gonna take some of Lion's brilliant signs that we use throughout the zoo. We're actually gonna modify them. The way he's made these is crazy. So these are little commas you can see as I select them. And by rotating them just the tiniest fraction, he's got just the very end of the comma sticking out in front, which is how you get those little lines of text. We'll play around with those, get them right, so we can have little semicircles in the corner of each viewing window. That's gonna look really good. All right, we are almost done with the entrance. What we're gonna do now is take this new fence from the Oceania pack, which is really cool and it's plexicolor as so many of the new pieces are, which is brilliant. I think in this darker wood, still keeping the um, lighter colored rope, we get a really nice African feel for this. So we're just gonna manually place this on both sides of the path and extend it round. We want some sort of consistent theming here. So although each area is gonna feel really different because of the different terrain, I want certain elements that are gonna be used throughout. And I think a generic fence like this uh, along the path is gonna to help tie the different areas together. So we'll just copy that across to the other side. I've put some misters in as well. I really like the effect that they created in the flying fox forest last week. Again, just makes the area more immersive. We'll put some more vines in. I told you there'd be a lot of vines in this area. So we're gonna drape these all over the trees put a couple of these nice African pieces down at the front and that is stage one of the entrance done let's take a look at it we haven't even started the higher parts of Africa and already it's looming over the desert house I really like how that looks I think the meerkat likes it as well this is the entrance sign loads more detail I didn't show you a lot of this because um, it's just doing the same thing over and over again I think that really sets up the area nicely uh, let's take a little walk through it. I don't often do a little tour cinematic, but I want you to see the effect of um, what it's like walking through here. I still think we need more vines, <laughs> so I'll probably put some more of those in. You can see the mist as well. I think that really helps to sell the area, but that's the, uh, the path. You can see the exhibits off in the distance there. Little aerial view, and then these are the exhibits. So really natural looking, I hope. That's what we're, uh, that's what we're going for. I'll show you another angle a bit here. We've got some of the new ferns from the Oceania pack growing over the top of it, which is nice, adds a, a nice third dimension to it. Here's the Goliath beetles. They are really beautiful, which is not something I say very often about beetles. Not really an insect guy. Um, <laughs> then we've got the Goliath frog. This guy is a real unit, absolutely <laughs> massive. Not the most attractive of the frogs, but they are pretty impressive. And finally, the snails. These guys strangely make a really good exhibit. Um, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the fact that they get up onto the branches like you can see here, um, but they just seem to work way, way better than you think a tank full of snails would do. Let's check out where we started today. And this is where we are now. 
doesn't actually look like we've done that much, but believe me, we have made some massive, massive strides today. Just the planning of this alone has taken weeks. And before we go, we'll check out the latest additions to the Explorers Club monolith. Thank you so much to everyone who's joined. If you want to see your name here, then hit the join button on the channel. Thank you for watching as always, and I'll be back next week with the next stage of Africa.